Hi, I'm Judy Godier, and we're going to learn how to make this adorable quilted jacket using my line of fabrics, Field of Seams. The jacket is the Tamarack jacket. It's a quilted jacket, and the wonderful thing about this is that the fabric already looks like pieces that are sewn together. It looks like it's already quilted. So we are going to teach you how to lay it out on the fabric so that you get this wonderful look and how to quilt it and put it all together. It's a very easy project to do, but there are a few tricks that we need to talk to you about in terms of the layout of the pattern. If you've ever wanted to learn to sew garments and you're a quilter, this is perfect. And if you've ever wanted to learn how to quilt and you're a garment sewer, it's perfect for you too. So in the words of all the uh, do it yourself and how to do it videos. Let's get started. This is the Tamarack jacket by Grainline Studio. This pattern comes in multiple sizes in one packet. So this is sizes zero to 18 and it says B cup. So this is gonna fit an average person that's going to be sewing this. This does, I am going to tell you in advance, run a little bit small because once you have cut the pieces and then quilted them, the quilting will actually pull some of that fabric together and it actually affects the size. I have found that to be true because I've made a couple of these jackets, cut out the pieces, then quilted them. And then once I put the jacket on, I was very glad that I made a larger size because it was a, it was a, it was a fit. I mean, it fitted and I had made a much larger size thinking it would be much larger and it ended up fitting me just right. So I would suggest going up a size. Whatever you normally take, go up one size or maybe even two sizes. Because if this is going to be worn as a jacket and you're going to have something underneath, you're going to need a little of extra room. Okay, so for the purposes of this video, we have chosen to keep this simple. Those of us at the Jaff Text Company that have put a lot of thought into producing this jacket with this fabric and creating the video decided that any extras can always be added by the more experienced sewist. We are going to aim this at the beginner, and then if you are very experienced in advance, you can certainly add any other touches that you'd like. So we are not going to be doing the welted pockets, and we are not going to be doing the snaps. We're simply going to do a basic jacket that you might wear over a cami or a t-shirt or something like that, that Later on, if you want to do this again and add snaps, zippers, whatever you want to do, that's great. But we're going to cover the basics for you. Now, like I said, this was produced by Grainline Studio. This is not my pattern. It is available commercially through any quilt shop and through um, their website themselves. It's an excellent pattern. It's tried and true by lots of people. So if you've not ever sewn a pattern before. This is how they typically look in the back. You're going to measure your body and you're going to decide what size you're going to take. Now, if you measure yourself, don't do it yourself. I would suggest having someone else do it for you. If you measure your waist and then you bend over to look at your measurement, it's going to affect the measurement. If you measure your hips and you bend over, to look at your hip measurement, that again is going to shift the measuring tape and affect the measurements. There are specific places on your body where you're going to measure bust, waist, and hip. So now let's talk about where on the body you should actually measure so that you can get the right size garment. A lot of people don't understand where the natural and actual waist, hip, or chest measurements are taken. And that's 
to be understood. Nobody's born with this knowledge. So the waist is actually right here and you can feel your natural waist. It is above the umbilicus. So the umbilicus is right about here. So it's going to be right here above that at the point in which your ribs end before your hips start. And it's, it's oftentimes not the narrowest part of your body, but this is your actual waist. So this is what it would be um, on, a, on a female. Here it is on the male. It's in the same place in each of these models. The hip is actually way down here, okay? And it should fall along the fullest part. So if I were to turn these bodies around, this should be the fullest part of your rump. Um, make sure that you get that measuring tape all around the fullest part of your rump. That's got to be measured so that there's that you have the, the largest part measured so that you don't get something that gets too tight in the hip. And then the chest is going to be, again, around the biggest part, the widest part of the bust and the back so that something isn't too tight. And, and have someone else do those measurements for you so that you're not looking down as you're trying to do it. Get a second person to measure those and um, start at zero, go around, and make sure that it, there is a second person doing it for you so that you're not looking down. Because when you look down, you're going to alter that measurement. Once you have determined your size, you're going to uh, purchase your fabric. And we, for the purposes of this video and for layout purposes, have decided to um, sew the size 14. All right, so it's two and a half yards for the size 14. And uh, I ordered a little bit extra, so I got two and three quarters yards. Um, we are, like I said, opening our fabric outward and we're going to be kind of fussy cutting it. So it would probably be a good idea to get a little bit extra, especially if you're a beginner. Okay, so we have our size. We've determined that we're a size 14. We have our fabric and now we're going to open our pattern. Now I've sewn this a couple times, so mine is already cut. But you're going to pull out your pattern and you're going to cut it to the correct size. Now you're just going to cut around the outside edges first. So you're going to cut around the pattern without cutting down to the size until you're actually cutting it. And what I mean by that, that sounds confusing, but what I mean by that is just separate the pieces. Just take the pattern out, open it out, separate the, um, separate the front, separate the back, and then when you're pinning it, that's when you're going to cut along your sizes where the lines are indicated. So just separate it out, cut out the front and cut out the back. You can cut tissue paper with a sewing scissors. That is permissible. You would not, if this was, if you downloaded this and it came on regular uh, typing paper or printer paper, then don't cut it with a sewing scissors, cut it with a junk scissors. All right, cut it out first, cut the the pattern pieces out first with the junk scissors. You don't want to ruin your sewing scissors. <clears throat> okay, so all we're going to need for the purposes of this video are the sleeve and the front and the back, which the back is cut along the fold. So here is my back. Anytime you see and this is the, uh, right here is the, the snap guide. We're not gonna be using that. So anytime you see something that has arrows that point like this to the edge, be aware that that means the fold. Always, always look at your pattern pieces very closely to make sure that you um, are, are aware of how many pieces need to be cut and if they need to be placed on the fold or not. That's really important. Because if you cut something and it's supposed to be placed on the fold and now you have two separate pieces, you're going to be in trouble. So this is cut from, this is the back. This is the back. This is the, um, 
spot where you're going to lengthen or shorten it. We're not going to do that. We're just going to make it just as it is. This is where it sits approximately on the hip. And then where they have these little hash marks, these are in place of notches. And we'll talk about that when I get closer to cutting these all out. Here is the beautiful fabric that I'm going to be using for the lining. Make sure you purchase the same amount of fabric for the lining as you do for the main fabric or the outside of the Tamarack jacket. Before we talk about cutting the outside or the main fabric of the Tamarack jacket, we're going to talk about how to cut and the basics of fabric using the lining. Okay, so we're going to go over how to cut a pattern out and specifics about the Tamarack jacket pattern before we talk about laying out the um, fabric for the outside of the jacket. Let's talk a little bit about straight of grain and some basics about using a pattern. When we're talking about straight of grain, we're talking about fabric being created on a weave and that we have to make sure that our pattern is pl placed correctly so that the finished garment doesn't hang crooked or hang wonky. Fabric is created by weaving a warp and a weft. So where you see that it says weft, this is where the edge of the salvage would be. These are bound edges and this is the warp, which are the cut across edges of the fabric. So this would be the salvage edges of the fabric and this would be the running length of the fabric. So I can never remember which one is weft and which one is warp. And it's not important to remember that, but it is important to remember that your fabric is a weave like this. There are uh, fibers going this direction and there are fibers going this direction. This is different than a knit. Knits are not created like this. This is just for regular woven fabrics. So why is warp and weft important and what is straight of grain? Well, here is my fabric and this is going to be the lining for the Tamarack jacket. And I have it, my fabric opened out and this is the running yardage. So the fibers are running this direction but they're also running this direction. Here's my selvage edge. I have this folded up so that there's two layers and I'm going to lay my jacket back lining on the fold, okay? So I'm gonna place this on the fold and it says grain line, which is this long line with the arrows here. When the arrows come at a, and they make a turn like this, this means that it's going to be laid on a fold, but the grain line goes this direction. All right, so what we have to do to make sure that this doesn't hang wonky or that we're not cutting it so that it, it's on a diagonal or anything like that is that we have to, once this fabric is folded up so that we have two layers, we're going to have to measure. We're going to measure from the selvage edge to the fold. And that is 13 and three quarters. Then I'm gonna measure down here to make sure that it's also 13 and three quarters, which it is. Now, if I had measured that it was 13 and three quarters here, and I got to here and it was only 12, I would have to adjust this so that it would be the same distance from here to here. And then that guarantees that my garment isn't going to be cut at a wonky angle. Now, we said that fibers run this direction and this direction. If you cut something on an angle, that's called the bias. Cutting something on the angle like this, on a 45 degree angle, uh, is called the bias and that will make it stretch. Things stretch when they're on the bias. So sometimes we do cut things on the bias on purpose. So now we're going to, now that we know that this distance from here to here and the distance from here to here is the same, we can lay our pattern piece on our fabric, place the line on the fold, start pinning, and then cut. 
The other thing that's important are the notches. The Tamarack jacket pattern has these little hash marks. Some patterns have actual little triangle shapes. And I'm sure you've seen those if you're familiar with garment patterns. So where the hash marks are, there are two hash marks here. So that means it's a double notch, which means that you're just going to cut wider. Um, you're going to cut it a little wider. Here, this hash mark here is, is singular. So I'm just going to cut one little triangle here. It doesn't have to be a triangle. You can cut however you want, whatever shape you want it to be. But it's important when you see those hash marks to make sure that you make a note of those and cut some type of shape around them because those are your match points. That's your match point for the sleeve. And this is the match point for where it's going to be sewn to the side seam of the uh, jacket front. Now I'm gonna be cutting out my jacket front. So the same process is going to apply. I'm going to have to measure to make sure that I folded this up the same distance on on this side, 14 and a half, as I did on this side. It's only 14 and a quarter. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit so that it becomes 14 and a half, so that it's the same here as it is here. Now it's 14 and a half, okay. But now, because I'm doing my front and I'm not placing it on a fold, now I have to do an additional step. Okay, there's my hash marks again for my um, notches. Now I have to do an additional step. There's the grain line marking on this pattern piece. Note, it is not angled downward on the ends, so it's not gonna be on a fold. Now I have to make sure that this is on, this from here to here is straight. Now I have to make sure that my pattern is laying straight on my fabric. So now I'm gonna measure from that grain line line, six and three quarters, six and a half. Okay, so it's not the same. So this is six and three quarters and this is six and a half. So I'm gonna move this up just slightly and measure it again. And this is how you keep six and three quarters, six and three quarters. This is how you keep your pattern pieces straight and you keep your um, garments from being sewn wonky. It's going to look, it's going to hang nicely on you if you take the time to do those steps. And now you can go ahead and pin and cut. Then we do the same process with the sleeve pattern as we did with the others where we measure straight of grain. If you are, if you have it opened out the way that we had it opened out when we cut the outside of the jacket, then you're going to be measuring straight of grain from the fold because your selvages are going to be next to each other and you will be measuring from that folded edge because that will be your known straight edge. The fabric field of seams is extremely lovely. It is 100% cotton and it is 44 inches wide. This is how it looks when it comes off the bolt in, from the quilt shop. You will be getting your yardage and one end here has the selvage edge and down here is the fold of the fabric. In order to make the jacket look the way that it looked at the beginning of the video, we have to be very aware of how this design is running. Now remember, this is how it looks when it comes off the bolt at the quilt shop. This is the folded edge, and up here is the selvage edge. Okay, there's two selvage edges because the fabric is folded over. And we have the design along the parallel of parallel to the selvage here. 
And on the other side, there is also a design, but the design is not as wide. It is only three squares in some spots as opposed to the wider design on the opposite side. So what we have to do is we have to open this fabric outward. In order to lay out our tamarack jacket pattern and have it achieve the look that we want it to have, you have to open the fabric out to its full width. Now remember we said it comes off of the bolt folded with the selvages together and a fold in the center. So what we have done is we've opened the fabric completely outward. And then instead of folding it along the center, what we're going to do is fold it so that it's like this. In doing that, we can then lay the jacket pattern out so that the fullest section of dark print will be at the bottom of the jacket. And as the jacket goes upward toward the shoulder, it is going to get lighter. So we have to open out the fabric so that we have our selvages on both outside edges. We've opened it to the full width. So here we have the an artist's representation pretty much um, where we have the fold of the fabric when the fabric is opened out. We have the heavy part of the design or the wider part of the design here on this end and then the narrower part of the design on this end. These are the selvage edges here and the selvage edges here as well. So you can see that it's folded wrong sides together. There's a fold here. The jacket back will be placed on the fold and there will be one jacket back cut on the fold. There'll be a jacket front placed here and we'll cut two and two jacket sleeves. Now it's gonna be important to note that the notches on the sides of the jacket need to match up on the design. So if this is my jacket front and my notch is here and my jacket back notch is right here. We're gonna match those notches so that we're in the same place on the design so that when we sew our side seams together, there is going to be a continuous look to the design. Also, here are the uh, armholes or the sleeve holes, and you can see that those are nicely lined up. So also that when you have the side seam sewn, it is going to match up nicely. The jacket sleeve, this can be up to you, okay? So if you, want to put the sleeve up higher so that there's a little bit of this design on the top of it and a little bit on the bottom and then a lot of the white or off-white in the center, that's one thing. Um, or you could just leave it so that the heavier part of the design or the bigger part of the design is at the bottom of the sleeve and it's light at the top of the sleeve. So this is a representation of what it should look like when you're cutting out the jacket back, the jacket front, and the jacket sleeve for the front of the pattern or the front of the jacket. The lining, like I showed before, is cut differently. It doesn't really matter that it has this all these design elements in it. This is the way that the uh, outside of the jacket should be laid out. Okay, now you can see I have my fabric completely opened out and folded wrong sides together. So there are two layers and I have my pattern pieces here the uh, back is on the fold here. Here is the front. And I've got it laid so that I, I know exactly where I want these patterned squares to fall. So I'm going to get my pins and I'm going to pin this where it is. Now this needs to be adjusted because these little spaces right here, those little um, slash marks are really the notches I actually cut a notch around that, and those are going to be where they match up. So I'm going to have those next to each other just like this. That way I know that my print will be directly across and it'll be falling in the right place. And here, once I pin this, my sleeve also, my sleeve opening, 
will also be matched up. Now I'm going to put my sleeve so that it's somewhere that's going to look nice, you know, like, you know, halfway, the, the pattern is going to be the, the fabric pattern. When I refer to pattern, this time I'm meaning the pattern on the fabric, the print, is going to be about halfway up that sleeve. And then I'm going to make sure that they are on the straight of grain, and I'm going to pin them down, and I'm going to cut. So I will be cutting one of these, two of these, because there's, there's this is layered, there's, there'll be two of them, but there'll only be one back because it's on the fold, and two of the sleeves. Okay, now the final pieces that you're going to cut from those three pattern pieces, the front, the back, and the sleeve, are the batting. So the batting will be cut the same as those, and I would recommend a low loft, 80% cotton, 20% polyester batting. This gets sandwiched in between the uh, lining and the outside of the jacket, and the directions for doing that are clearly spelled out in the pattern instructions for the Tamarack jacket. Okay, so now I have followed the instructions and I have quilted my pieces. I have sandwiched the batting between the outside of the jacket, the lining of the jacket, and then quilted it. Now, the directions did not say to put the two together, the, the back and the front with the shoulder seam before quilting, but I did that just because it would diminish the number of raw edges that are in the jacket. So I put the, the front to the back at the shoulder seams for the outside and for the lining, okay? And then I sandwiched the batting in there. I stitched the batting together also along the shoulder seams. And then I quilted it, quilted the whole thing, all right? So that just diminishes the number of unfinished seams that are exposed. So then what the next step will be, and then here are the sleeves. The sleeves are also quilted. This particular fabric leaves a bit of a conundrum in that you have a dark fabric here and light up there. So you have to decide what kind of thread you want to use to quilt it. I used a, a very light blue, um, just flat cotton, not anything shiny or anything like that. So I have this and the other sleeve to be set in to the um, sleeve openings, and that is what I will do next. Then I will um, put the binding on the bottoms, because that's going to be a bias binding on the bottom of the jacket, both in the back and in the front. And this is all according to the instructions, so just follow the instructions well. and. Um, the next thing we will be doing is talking about seam finishing. So follow the directions for the rest of the jacket. And then the next thing we'll be talking about will be finishing off the seam allowances. All right, now in the pattern, it will tell you all the instructions you need, and then it will say to finish the seam allowances. It isn't specific about how they want you to finish the seam allowances. Now, technically, yes, this is a lining because we have layered the um, outside fabric, the lining fabric, and the batting, and we've quilted it. But it really isn't acting as a true lining. A true lining will enclose seam allowances, and this doesn't do that. This is a quilt, right? This is a quilted piece. It's not a true lining. All right, so what we have to do with our seam allowances, this is my sleeve seam allowance, what we have to do is encase these with a binding. You don't have to do that, you could serge it with your serger, you could zigzag it, but I am extremely bothered by left open and unfinished seam allowances. Now part of the issue then with, with binding these, you know, you, you know about binding with quilts, maybe, maybe you don't, but, um, is that it's it's thick. Uh, we have, and, and quilting is, is thick as well. But with a quilt, you just typically have a layer of fabric, 
a layer of batting, and then another layer, you know, that's your quilt, and then you put your binding on that. In this instance, we have that and then some because we have that again on the opposite side. We have, you know, a seam allowance with one, two, three, four, five, six layers. So what I'm going to suggest that you do is something that in the garment world we call grading the seam allowances. Now this can be tricky, so you have to be very, very careful that you're not cutting, you know, your, your actual um, garment on either side, all right? A duck bill scissors might help, um, actually would help. What you can do is uh, open this out like this, and to reduce some of that bulk, you can cut down a little bit lower than this other seam allowance side here. Cut just down that one side. So that's called grading. You've heard about, you know, when they grade the gravel on the side of the road, they it's, it's a, kind of a gradual process of, you know, scraping off the side of the road, you know, where it gets thinner and thinner until it finally tapers off. That's kind of what you're doing here. You're grading the seam allowance. So see how I'm doing this? I'm getting a, rid of some of that bulk that would be inside of that binding. And especially because this is a sleeve, it's up around your shoulder, um, you wanna be able to put your arm in and not have a lot of bulk in there. So I'm grading the seam allowance. And then after that, I'm going to put my binding on. And I'm gonna show you how that's done. Now, now here, we not only have all six layers, but now we are coming in contact with this seam allowance here, where the shoulder seam was made. So we got a lot of thickness here, and there's no doubt that we've got a lot of thickness. Um, the other trick of when you're sewing thick things is to increase your stitch length. So I wanna make sure to mention that in this video that when you're sewing all these seams together, you can increase your stitch length. My Bernina normally is at about a 2.5, um, so I've increased it to maybe like a little over three, and then that helps the walking foot to go over all these thicknesses. You definitely have to have a walking foot on your machine when you're sewing all these together. Okay, so this is grading the seam allowance. And you can see how nice that looks. I'm gonna cut off this little notch here. This was my placement notch for my sleeve. Okay, and then we're gonna talk about binding. Okay, now what I have here is two inches wide bias binding that I have cut from Pepper Cottons, because Pepper Cottons by Studio E just handles and lays so beautifully as binding, and I would highly recommend using this. Um, so it's two inches wide, it's on the bias. I've cut my edge off so that it's blunted, and I'm going to fold it under and then I'm going to fold this in half. This will be then sewn onto the seam allowance. And I'm gonna show you exactly where I'm going to start sewing this on the seam allowance of the sleeve, okay? I'm not gonna start at the very edge. I'm gonna start slightly in from the edge. And the reason for that is because there is going to be another binding coming up the side seam. And I don't wanna to have to have even yet another thickness in there. So let me show you where we're going to start that. Okay, so I'm going to start pinning this about five eighths of an inch in from the uh, edge of my sleeve because I am eventually going to have to make a side seam here and that's going to be having binding on it as well. So I don't want all that thickness. So I'm gonna start in a little ways. So this is the seam allowance for the sleeve where I have set the sleeve in, all right? And I'm going to pin this onto the side where as I graded it, let me see if I can make this a little clearer here, where I graded this, um, it's the longer side. That's where I'm gonna sew it. And then I'm gonna bring it around to the shorter side, the shorter side of the seam allowance where I graded. And I'm going to pin this along the edge. I know some people use wonder clips. I'm still a pinning kind of girl. And uh, you can use whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever you'd like. And whatever you prefer to use is fine. So I'm gonna pin this on here. 
And when I sew my binding on, I'm gonna make sure that I'm staying outside of my actual seam where my sleeve got sewn to my jacket because I don't wanna make a bigger seam allowance and pinch in the uh, jacket sleeve and the back together with an additional seam, right? I'm hoping that makes sense. I want to stay inside my seam allowance when I'm sewing my binding on my seam allowance. I wanna stay inside my seam allowance because you don't want an additional seam allowance where you've already sewn that sleeve to the jacket. You don't need to sew it on a second time. All you're trying to do here is encase, you're encasing your seam allowance. Okay, so pin this all the way around to the end of your sleeve. Make sure your edges are well approximated of your binding. And like I said, I'm using peppered cottons because this fabric is so, it's just a miracle fabric. It's great for quilting. It's great for sewing garments. It's great for bindings. It's just, it is so workable and soft. You know how you sometimes just find that perfect thread or that perfect, that's how this peppered cottons fabric is. It's just, it's a shot cotton. Um, we sell it at Bungalow Quilting and we sell a lot of it. And during the pandemic, we sold tons of it for masks because it was so breathable and so soft against your skin. Thank God we're not thinking about that anymore. So, okay, so I'm gonna go all the way down to the end of my seam allowance. You don't need to watch me pin the whole thing. Okay, now this is how it should look. All right, the, the binding is pinned to the seam allowance of the sleeve. And you may ask, how did you know how long to make that binding for the seam allowance of the sleeve? Well, I started out with a piece, let's, let's put it this way. The answer to that is long enough, all right? So take a long enough piece of binding because fabric is dynamic, all right? I'm not going to measure this and then cut it exactly, right? Because that would be a mistake because what's going to happen is because fabric is dynamic and it moves and it shifts, it may not be long enough. Now, I know what they say about measure twice, cut once, but I didn't measure it. I just made sure that it was plenty long, okay? That it was plenty long so that when I pinned it on, I was able to then fold the end under here, you know, cut, big, long enough chunk, fold the un end under, and then leave a little bit of room here again, like I said, for my seam allowance that's coming up my side. All right, so always make sure you're not shorting yourself because it won't, it won't save you any time to measure ahead on something like this. Yes, there's an awful lot of things that you measure ahead on. This is not one of them. This is the one where you want to give yourself enough slack and enough room. All right, so it looks great. It's pinned on, and now I'm going to stitch I'm going to stitch this edge here and I'm going to it's going to be enough to catch this underneath the seam allowance underneath but it's it's not going to catch the I'm not going to go outside of that little that seam allowance line I'm, I'm going to I'm going to stay within inside that and then we're going to take that and then fold it over and stitch on the opposite side. Okay, so now my binding is sewn on. I've stayed outside of my seam allowance, but I still was able to catch the seam allowance in there and caught both sides of the, bi the bias binding. Okay, you wanna make sure to do that. And now I can proceed to flipping it around to the other side so that I am going to be able to cover my seam allowance and I will not have a raw edge. So I'm going to be able to bring this around and I'm going to stitch on here. All right, I'm gonna to top stitch on there. And I'm gonna, again, stay outside of my seam allowance, but this gives it a beautiful closure so that you don't have a raw edge. I absolutely had it ingrained in me as a child when I sewed garments and as a young adult, you do not leave a raw edge. You just don't do it. You do not, do not ever leave a raw edge. And if that means lining something or using a serger, even if you have to just zigzag, you either use a, you either do one of those or use a French seam or whatever you have to do when you're sewing a garment. That was a dull pin. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to roll this over to the opposite side and I'm going to stitch it down. And then I, I'm going to change my thread color because I, I want to make sure that the underside here is a light color thread on my bobbin so that I'm not having an obvious line of stitching. 
So my bobbin thread is going to be one color. My top thread is going to be another so that we have a professional finished looking garment. Okay, so here it is up close and personal. A lovely little seam finish. You've bound off the uh, seam allowance so that it's not loose, right? You don't want unfinished seam allowances. Now, if you're a newbie to all of this, I had said to cut these bias strips two inches. You might want to be generous, okay? Be generous with yourself, um, maybe two and an eighth to two and a quarter, but no more than that. But yes, if you're a newbie, um, you will probably want to cut that just a little bit wider. So you just can have a little more to play with. I've been doing this for many, 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 many years. And so, you know, it's not a problem for me. So now the next thing we're going to do, now that I've encased my sleeve seam allowance, I'm going to stitch the right sides together. I'm going to put the side seam in and I'm going to do the exact same thing with my binding and bind that side seam. Okay, I wanna point out what I was referencing before when I explained to how you should not take that binding right down to the very end of that seam allowance on the sleeve. And this is the reason why. I have now sewn my side seam. This is my sleeve going down my side seam and I've sewn it. If you sew this all the way down to the end, you've got two of these here, right? You've got it on two sides because you've done your whole entire seam allowance on your sleeve. You're going to be in a world of hurt when it comes to going across this underarm seam because you're going to not only have the thicknesses of the seam allowances from the sleeves, now you're gonna have the thicknesses of the seam allowances from and all the bulk that is involved with putting a binding on a sleeve seam allowance. So. Stop before you get to the end of the sleeve when you're doing that binding, um, see, when you get to that end of that seam allowance. Because if you don't, like I said, you are just going to have nothing but trouble when you get to this. Now, when I do my binding on my entire sleeve here, or I'm sorry, yes, on my entire sleeve, my underarm, and then my side seam, I have this much to play with here for putting in my binding here and I'm not cutting across or sewing across, not cutting, sewing across all of that bulk. That would just be absolutely impossible to do. So that is why I said when you do your binding on your seam allowance on your sleeve, you have to um, leave that space. So now I'm gonna flip it around and show you what I'm talking about here. See now, here is the other seam allowance for the sleeve. This is the sleeve seam allowance. Here's my underarm seam. And now I have room to put this here. And I could probably even sew in just even a little bit further to join that up, but not no, you know, it's not necessary. If there's just a little bit left on this side like there is here once I pull this over, it's not going to fray and it's not going to cause a problem with, um, you know, having it be an un a bad, unfinished look. What you really primarily want is not to have a miserable mess when you get to that underarm seam and not be able to sew that. Okay, now we're going to talk just briefly about the bound edge of the bottom of the sleeve. I did it differently than the directions say. The directions will tell you to do the binding on the sleeve prior to doing the side seams. Um, if you do that and you have the binding on the bottom of the sleeve and then you're going to do your side seams and then put your binding on, you're going to have the end of your binding um, either exposed or you're going to have these kind of open and loose. And I can't explain it any better than that other than to say that this is why I waited and I chose to do my sleeve binding after this side seam binding was sewn on. Okay, sorry, that was not right in the middle here. The side seam binding is on here, okay? And it when you sew the underarm seam and the side seam all in one fell swoop, then I have bound it already and there's no binding on my sleeve edge. And that's because I want 
my sleeve edge to be bound so that this is all completely covered and all completely encased. So what I'm going to do instead is to measure this exactly, all right, then cut my, my bias binding and stitch it with a half an inch seam allowance. So I'm measuring this and then I'm adding, you know, the half an inch on both edges. So you're adding a total of an inch. So measure this around exactly at an inch, make a half an inch seam allowance and then you're going to stitch the binding on and then flip it outward, top stitch, and then all of this will be enclosed and encased. So let me go ahead and show you how that's done. Okay, so I measured my distance around exactly and it came out to be 13 inches all the way around. So I cut my bias binding two inches wide by 14 inches because I'm going to make a half inch seam allowance here. I'm gonna sew these together, right? Right sides together, and I'm going to make a half an inch seam allowance here. Okay, so this is the wrong side of the sleeve. Out here is the right side of the sleeve. You can see my seam allowance was covered here, my underarm and, and side seam allowance. And here is the one that I just cut and sewed with a um, half an inch seam allowance. This is gonna go around my sleeve, my sleeve band. And I'm going to now fold it wrong sides together. Okay, wrong sides together. Let's flip this out. Fold it in half so that it's wrong sides together. Keep my seam allowances together like this. And I'm going to pin this onto my sleeve. So that when I sew this, it's continuous and there's nothing peeking out. So when I sew this, it's continuous and there's nothing peeking out from my sleeve. This is just going to be a continuous band and it will be closed off and my sleeve there'll be nothing peeking out from under it. And if you've noticed, I actually did stop sewing with my, with my side seam a little ways up here. See that, how I left that? So that, that, that I had that room to sew, just like we did on the underarm. Because there's enough bulk already happening with all of these coming together all of these bindings coming together. There's enough bulk with the, with the batting in the fabric, let alone all the binding coming together. All right, so this will make you much happier with your sleeve. It will look much nicer than if you had put the binding on prior to sewing that side seam. It's just, it just looks so much more professionally finished. Not that it's wrong to do it the other way. You certainly can do exactly as the directions say, but this is just a little tidbit here for why I do it this way. Okay, see, now it's Perfect, and I'm going to go and sew it, and we'll show you how it looks in the end. So now we have our finished sleeve with nothing going peekaboo at the end here, right? This is all closed up. I'll clip my little threads here. This is all closed up. You don't have this coming out playing peekaboo at the end, right? Whereas if you had sewn this first, and then sewn the side seams, and then did the binding, you'd have the ends of those bindings poking out here, as opposed to it being continuously closed as a loop. So that's my tip and my trick. If you want to do it this way, you certainly can, following the directions exactly as they say, or you, know, you can do it this way so that there's nothing going peekaboo at the end. And that's a wrap. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And I really hope to see people running around with their tamarack jackets 
made using Field of Scenes. Mm. 